Hi, this is Joyce Polino Crane. I'm the news director at Westford Cat, and I'm here today with Paul Starrett and Christine Collins. We are here to talk about a subject that is near and dear to Paul's heart, but makes my eyes glaze over: <laughs> storm water. <laughs> I, I, that is a common effect, actually. <laughs> I would imagine. Yes. <laughs> so, Paul, why are we talking about storm water now? Well, uh, back in 2003, uh, the town was required to get a permit from the EPA in order to discharge storm water, which is uh, rain and melting snow, into the waters of the U.S. That would include storm uh, ponds, lakes, rivers, streams, wetlands. All of the receiving waters where rain and melting snow ends up carries pollutants with it, and so the EPA, uh, uh, these many years ago, back in, starting back in 2003, required municipalities like Westford all across the country uh, to start paying attention to the pollutants that were getting into our stormwaters. Uh, they gave us six minimum control measures to satisfy. We had to do public education, part of what we're doing here today. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to create ordinances here in the town for stormwater management and illicit discharge. We did that back in 2008, 2009. Uh, we also had to pay attention to erosion controls on construction sites, both during construction when there's a, lot, there's a big likelihood of there being erosion into our uh, waters, our natural resources. But also, we have to pay attention to erosion and runoff uh, after construction happens, um, and a, a couple other items that we had to pay attention to. So uh, following the permit that was issued in 2003, uh, the EPA issued a, a new a revised permit, and that came out in 2018. Uh, the difference is that uh, the first permit in 2003 required uh, about three dozen uh, different things that the town had to do. Mm -hmm. The new permit, uh, depending on how you count them, is over 200 items that we have to do. Uh, mm -hmm. would have, have a lot more rigorous testing standards. Uh, the first permit, we needed to locate our outfalls and go out and, and do some testing uh, to verify that there was nothing illicit coming out of those outfalls. But under the new permit, uh, not only do we have to go out and uh, test all those outfalls again, we're taking samples and testing them for pH and for connectivity, for uh, the, uh, uh, pathogens like E. coli, uh, other identifiers of pathogens. We also now have to backtrack and find out where those pollutants are coming from, do a variety of testing, or to have uh, some of them will have to use closed circuit TVs to trace back into pipes find out where these pollutants are coming from. Typically, that would be maybe a leaking septic system or some, someone that maybe had connected a sump pump into the town's drain system. Uh, all those different things that we're going to have to identify and eliminate as a part of the permit. Uh, we also have to map, do a significant amount of mapping. Uh, in the original permit, we, did, we located our catch basins, our manholes, and, and our outfalls. Uh, now we've got to demonstrate all the connectivity, uh, what the sub-catchments are around various locations so that we know, you know, if, if pollutants are getting into the a system, we'll start to know through our mapping how they're getting there and how we can, we can stop it. Just a lot more rigorous uh, requirements uh, in the new permit. So is, I'm, I'm thinking this is like, it sounds like a full-time job to hire a manager of stormwater. Well, you're Who, you're you're looking be? at the <laughs> you're it. You're looking at for at least uh, for the 14 years that I've been here in Westford uh, uh, and earlier in another jurisdiction since 2003, I've had responsible for charge for making sure that that our town uh, is in compliance with that permit and uh, I'm with uh, with a lot of assistance from other departments. Uh, we've been able to do that chiefly the. Uh, the Highway Department and the Conservation uh, Commission has been helpful to us in making sure we're doing everything we can to protect our natural resources. But it's it's um, it's not meant to be overburdensome, but 
there you, you, to get the results that the government is looking for and that I would argue we would want to see ourselves cleaner water and better natural and, and safer natural resources it does take an investment of, of uh, work hours and, and money. So I would imagine um, the state is going to monitor the communities, sending someone up here to yeah, well, gauge uh, what, the, what's they, going in the, the drain the, the, the permit basins. The permit comes from the EPA. Uh, Massachusetts is uh, one of only three states in the nation uh, that has not assumed uh, state responsibility for, in, for uh, enacting the permit requirements. Uh, uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and there's one other state uh, that uh, is directly, has direct oversight by the EPA. Massachusetts, in our Department of Environmental Protection, the DEP, they have co-signed the permit, so they have some responsibilities they are working with us to make sure that we're in compliance but the whole permit is designed to be self-reporting oh. uh, so each year uh, um, for the past you know 14 15 years we have been sending an annual report to the EPA and Mass DEP indicating all of the things that we said we were going to do in, in our permit and then all the things uh, that we did do in those areas where we uh, need to uh, catch up or uh, do something else and uh, to stay in compliance. All those reports and a lot of other information are available on the town's stormwater website at westfordma.gov slash stormwater or you can just do Westford stormwater you'll get to that, mm -hmm. that site. Uh, and you can see the annual reports that we've published that indicate all the things that we were required to do and are doing. What What does this goal cost? Do you have a dollar amount in your head? Well, uh, we've been working with uh, Christine Collins, our, our collector, the selectmen, our consultants uh, uh, that that have experience in, in all of these matters. And uh, right now, I would say the the number that we are looking for to stay in compliance is is on the order of a million dollars a year right. uh, depending on on how much uh, capital projects that we want to accomplish in any given year or collectively uh, uh, over a period of years well and in the master plan which i'm sure paul will talk about mm -hmm. more they are proposing levels of service. So the selectmen have not yet made a decision about what level of service they, you, you know, because it's attached to that price tag. So there's actually a range of cost. The protective level of service is the one that Paul's talking about, which is the middle, the middle ground, is in the neighborhood of about a million additional dollars um, over what we're currently spending. And how do you fund that, you being the treasurer? Well, we, the selectmen um, will be hearing from, you know, us and the consultant at their May 28th meeting um, to talk more about a fee. That is one option, and um, the fee has been discussed. We, we showed some slides at town meeting to show a representation of what a fee might look like. In those samples, we had a, you know, the smaller home or the less impervious surface on a property might be a $45 a year fee. Uh, an average home would be about $75 a year and a larger impervious area on a residential property would be about 113. Commercial customers would pay quite a bit more um, because it's based on impervious surface. The fee would be based on impervious surface. In other words, surfaces on a property that water doesn't pass through, roofs, driveways, and so on. So a fee is one option continuing to do what we've been doing and covering it out of um, our already raised and appropriated money. We could continue to do that, but uh, you know we're, we're concerned that one of two things could happen. It could be that other budgets would have to be pretty drastically cut to come up with the additional funding to continue to support stormwater compliance, or um, that we simply would not be able to keep up with the requirements uh, of stormwater. There's also um, a surtax that um, is available. However, no towns have 
have used it yet, <laughs> but it would work very much like the CPA surtax, right, and which, it would be you know be up, up to three percent right. of the taxes, and it would be money that would be set aside in a separate account, just right. like CPA voted on by town meeting like CPA. With recommendations. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it would have to be, um, if we were to go with the surtax, there would have to be a vote of town meeting and a ballot vote as well. So the voters would have to say yes twice, in or just like CPA tax, in, or in order to get this stormwater surtax. But no, no matching funds, right? Correct. Whereas CP CPA does get the matching We funds. still have a yeah. little bit of match left, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Let's talk about the um, uh, town meeting and the um, enterprise fund that you tried to get um, approved and, and, and unfortunately was, it, it you did failed. not get the approval. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we were hoping that um, we could ask the voters to approve the enterprise fund so that we would know the structure that we were going into for the uh, coming budget season. Um, the other thing that we, you know, we hoped to do was to get the discussion started. Yes. It was very important to begin discussing stormwater where we had an audience of people who maybe wouldn't come out to a special meeting just about stormwater, but being, you know, there for town meeting, I don't know how many were there, maybe around 500 people. A little bit less, but yeah. Yeah, we, we got to we got to inform some people that this is up for a very serious discussion and it will impact um, everyone in town at some point. So, um, you know, it wasn't, it, it didn't feel like a total loss. It means that we are going to have to be prepared in several different ways for the new budget season when it comes up in, in the summer. You know, and that's okay. We, we, we knew that that could be a possibility and, you know, we're working, uh, Paul and I and the highway surveyor and um, the assistant engineer and water Dan department. Dan O'Donnell, the finance director, the water department, we have been working in meeting to um, create a budget mm -hmm. that we feel uh, is a realistic budget uh, f and a projection for a couple of years. So um, that's in the works now so that we'll have a, a better idea when it comes to the budget right. season and the capital planning part of the season and all of those things. So. And that's, that's a reasonable request from town meeting to, yeah. to have more information. Right. Uh, and we're working, uh, uh, we at the time uh, were, were creating the enterprise fund and then subsequently coming back uh, with the detailed information to give us more time to prepare that. Uh, interestingly, we found out in this process that uh, the selectmen are already empowered by Mass General Law to establish a fee for stormwater. Right. Uh, oh, they could do that. So you don't need a vote. No, that's not a vote of the town meeting mm -hmm. uh, to create a fee. The, the, the general laws provide for the selectmen to make a decision in the interest of the town to protect its natural resources and maintain its stormwater infrastructure, which in Westford is very aged and mm -hmm. uh, under-designed and out of compliance in a lot of locations. So the legislature has provided for you know, the selectmen to make that decision, to set a rate um, and, and collect that money from the taxpayers, from, from the residents. Uh, but the, the mechanism was the enterprise fund largely because it's very transparent. You can yeah. see every year at town meeting, uh, town meeting members would be able to see uh, what our revenues are, what our, you know, um, our budget is going to be, how we're spending it, how much of that are we uh, saving aside for future years on larger capital programs. Uh, but again, I think town meeting wanted to know more about my interpretation. It's uh, it, it wasn't in the vote, but I and mm -hmm. I would guess that they wanted to know more about where that money, how how much that money was going to be, and where it was going to go. Right. So when you say a fee, I mean, what's the difference between a fee and a, another tax? So a, a fee, as we understand it from the consultants, would first of all be issued to every property in town. Nonprofits would receive a bill for a fee. Uh, municipal buildings, uh, either the selectmen or the school committee would receive a bill for their buildings. So everyone would contribute. The other thing that a fee does is 
it distributes the cost. So let's say that a million dollars is the amount that we need to, to come up with. The formula distributes the cost based on the amount of impervious surface. And the reason that makes sense in some ways is that the impervious surfaces contribute more into the storm drains right. and more pollution and things like that that doesn't get filtered through the ground. Right. So because that sort of is a, a common sense connection, um, what does Ref tell us like to call it? A rational nexus. A rational nexus. Between stormwater and impervious surfaces. Right, so th that, uh, that allows us to build in a way that seems more fair yeah. because the businesses that contribute um, you know, have these huge parking lots and everything yeah. are, are paying a larger proportion of that million than the average homeowner is going to be paying. So under a tax, they would all increase at the same rate. And the nonprofits would And the nonprofits and, and municipal buildings would not pay. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other payment method that I forgot to mention is overrides whether we do an override for capital project by mm -hmm. capital project as it comes up, or we were to do a general override that would provide for a stormwater budget. That, that's the other way that this could be funded. Okay, so. Or a combination of these things. And all this information, uh, Joyce, uh, came to us through, we anticipated that these changes were coming, that uh, we all knew that the permit was expiring and they would be issue, the EPA would be issuing a new permit, and uh, so that gave us an opportunity starting back in 2015 and 16 to prepare a stormwater management master plan. Uh, this was a significant effort uh, approved by town meeting to look at our stormwater system as it exists today in, in, in very big detail. Uh, then uh, consider where do we need, where does that stormwater system need to go in order to stay in compliance and then the third component of the master plan was, well, how do we get there? How do we do that? Um, one of the important things we learned when we studied our existing stormwater system, uh, we went out with cameras and, and uh, opened up catch basins and inspected a lot of it. We spent a significant part of a summer making inspections around the town. And so we know that our, our drain system is getting old. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's just going to be a New England mentality when we take a concrete structure, put it in the ground and bury it, and we can just forget about it. It's just going to always be there. Uh, it's always going to do its job, and we don't have to think about it anymore. Uh, but in fact, uh, our system was designed when we didn't have as much impervious surface. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our, found, our founders did a great job. Uh, we discovered that as well. I know a lot of a lot of good thought went into how our original storm drain system was built, but you know you don't anticipate all the increases in impervious surfaces. Uh, we don't think about all the salt that we put on the road that eventually eats that concrete, right. uh, and so we are uh, slowly coming up on a, a large number of capital projects that are going to have to be in place to uh, replace our, a lot of our drain system. Well, we just we have a few minutes left and. You brought uh, a P P public service announcement, right. PSA. Right. Um, Want to take a moment to sure. look at it? Sure. Yep. Yeah, we can Let's do watch. that. Let's take a take a take a look at this video. If you live in the Greater Lowell region, you live within one of four local watersheds: the Merrimack, Ipswich, Shawshine, and Suasco. The Merrimack and Concord Rivers provide drinking water for thousands of people, generate energy, and serve as a recreational resource. The natural resources within our watersheds enhance our quality of life, and it is our responsibility to protect and improve the quality of our water. Where does the pollution come from? When it rains or when snow melts, water runs off roads, sidewalks, lawns, and paved areas. It picks up pollutants such as oil leaked from vehicles, trash, soil, and fertilizer. These pollutants flow into storm drains untreated and enter our rivers, lakes, and wetlands. They can increase flooding, impact the quality of our drinking water, affect public health, and harm wildlife. Protect our streams, rivers, and lakes by taking these simple steps. Never dump chemicals such as fuel, paint, pesticides, or cleaning agents down storm drains or on the ground. Don't put them in your trash or dump them in sinks or toilets. Take your unwanted hazardous waste to a hazard waste collection day. 
Dispose of pet waste properly. Flush dog waste down the toilet or dispose of it and use cat litter in the trash. Don't wash your car on a paved surface. Take it to a car wash or wash it on the lawn to prevent soap from entering storm drains and waterways. When working on your car, use drip pans to catch fluids. Clean up spills with absorbent materials and recycle used fluids at participating service stations. Avoid overwatering your lawn and water after dusk or early in the day. Install a rain barrel to collect rainwater. Have your septic system inspected every three years and pumped as needed. During construction or remodeling projects, make sure your contractor protects nearby storm drains. Never pump pool water or backwash into a storm drain. It's up to all of us to keep our streams, rivers, and lakes clean. Now I can tell you that the, the, that program was put together by the Northern Middlesex Stormwater Collaborative and uh, Westford is one of the founding members of that group. We're always looking for opportunities uh, to lessen the burden uh, on, on the residents to find creative ways to be in compliance uh, and not just spend money to get there. Uh, this collaborative was one of the efforts where we're, we work together as a result of the Northern Middlesex Council of Governments who helped us put this together uh, with 13, 14 other communities in the area to combine resources to do things like prepare this uh, a video clip that you just saw, that public service announcement, to educate people uh, about the things that they can do to help us with stormwater. Um, and so you still have the problem of a million dollars a year right. added to a budget that's already stressed and, you know, right. uh, belt tightening going on here mm -hmm. this year in Westford. Okay. So what will you do? Well, the selectmen are considering all of those options that we talked about, whether to institute a fee, whether to look at a surtax, overrides, do the minimum we have to do until mm -hmm. something fails. I mean, that's Are kind of what we've been doing. Is right. that fair to say? Yes, yeah. We, we, are, we, are, we try to be as proactive as we can, anticipating, as we did with the Kai's Culvert project, uh, uh, that was replaced uh, with federal assistance um, outside of your studios this summer. We, uh, the state is paying to replace a, a stormwater culvert um, out uh, the Kilson Brook uh, down by Ace Hardware. And uh, so, uh, you know, those are, those are things that we can anticipate. Yet, uh, two weeks ago, we had, uh, mm -hmm. we had a closed Providence Road. We had a culvert fail there. Uh, we had another, we have another one on Tenney Road that's in failure, there, one on Concord Road that we know about. So there are just these, you know, projects that we're going to keep going back to capital to say, okay, we're either closing roads or, you know, yeah. and, and disastrously too because now, you know, the, the waters can't flow anymore to replace culverts and, and to do other projects that we need to do. We are always looking opportunities to, to get funding. Uh, we have been very successful. Uh, and very aggressive about getting a transportation improvement project monies uh, to fix the intersections like here at Oak Hill. Yes, uh, thank you so much yes. for that. <laughs> and uh, currently under construction, uh, Tad, uh, um, uh, Dunstable Road intersection yeah. just completed Tadmuck. All of those projects come with uh, drainage components. So right. you have uh, state-of-the-art drainage facilities that with a you know, a projected life of 50 to 75 years uh, that the state has paid for. We're looking at Boston Road it will be coming up in another five years. That's a six million dollar project, uh, a huge component. About 25 percent of that is stormwater related. So we look for those opportunities, but uh, uh, we're just not going to get all of the money that we need uh, from the state to be in compliance. Christine, if, if you could talk to the Westford community, which you yeah. can yeah. right now, <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell them about this? Hmm. What would I tell them? Pay attention to the selectmen's meetings. They've been discussing this at every meeting um, up until last week's meeting. Right, from town meeting. And then again, they're going to be discussing uh, May 28th. If, they, if people have an interest in it, now is the time to have their voices heard. Um, and to listen and learn. I think that at town meeting we were trying to keep it about the enterprise fund, but as Paul has explained, I think very well, it's, it's 
both about money and clean water. So let's not forget what it's really about. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, w I, I hope that people will listen. I'm, I'm anxious to hear f public feedback. What if they don't? If they don't listen, yeah. we're going to get a lot of phone calls, whether the taxes are raised, whether right. it's a fee and they get a bill in the mail for a fee. Mm -hmm. We're going to end up with a lot of very upset and confused people. I was in Groton when the community preservation surtax happened, mm -hmm. and we did a lot of public outreach at that time. <laughs> and I still, for years, had people say, "What is this on my bill?" You know. Yeah. So you can do what you can do to educate people, um, and then people have to enter into the process as well. Yeah. So. You know, I hope they do. I, I really hope they do. Yeah. And so you asked, what if we don't? What I, if we I, don't? I think Paul? you know that has been that question has been asked publicly before, and and the response is honestly, we we don't know what the EPA is going to do. I know what they did in the first uh, permit is that they uh, they find communities uh, for noncompliance. Uh, uh, and uh, in addition to which they still have to be in compliance. So the EPA will come to town and say, okay, now you have a consent order from the court, you will do these, these permit requirements. And in addition to that, you're going you're gonna to do more than is required. That's their way of fining uh, communities. They make you do additional projects that you would normally be doing. But uh, so, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned at the beginning that this is, you know, this is an act of Congress, this Clean Water Act uh, that, uh, that um, promulgated the, the program, the, the permitting program that we're in now, uh, is not going away, uh, you know, and, and uh, nor do I think that uh, communities around the country are going to be able to say that, you know, no, we're not going to follow this law. Uh, so we, we will we'll just need to find a way. Yeah. Uh, to, we're fortunate here in Westford uh, with good leadership uh, of doing this. This is certainly no one will ever accuse Westford of a knee-jerk reaction to when it comes to stormwater. This has been very <laughs> well thought out, our master plan, discussions, and topics. Thank you, Paul. Good job. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. For Westford Cat News, this is Joyce Polino-Crane. Hope to see you around town.